is the Coin Show Podcast. A podcast about coins and coin collecting from the perspective of both dealers and collectors. Hosted by two guys with a passion for collecting and a combined experience of over 50 years in the coin industry. Here's Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman on the Coin Show Podcast. It is episode 210 of the Coin Show Podcast. Wow. I'm ready to go. I am fired up. I know. I'm so excited. Let's do this. On this episode of the Coin Show Podcast, we're going to do what we've done for the last 209 episodes. We're going to talk about uh, some of the stuff that happened in our shops this week. We will talk about the coolest thing that walked into our shops this week. Uh, We're going to take your listener questions, and we're just going to generally knock it around about coins. But first, as always, the news. This is so special. I'm so excited for this. Mike, who is the news brought to you by tonight? The news is brought to you by Spicy Mike's Hot Sauce. Spicy Mike is bringing you just the perfect blend of rational thoughts, slowly marinated in sarcasm for a flavor that you won't find anywhere else. Get yourself some Spicy Mike's Hot Sauce, available exclusively on the Coin Show podcast. That's Spicy Mike's Hot Sauce. Get you some. some. That's right. Get you some. Check that out, guys. Spicy Mike's Hot Sauce is a real thing now. It exists. We made it. There it is. That's Spicy Mike's Hot Sauce. Nice. And there's a way for people to get some. Yep. And it's awesome. But it's that's all it's all coming. Yes. Yes. Just you know. And by earrings. Sometimes they dangle, sometimes they mangle, especially if you let them tangle. Being beautiful isn't for everyone, but for some, there's earrings. <laughs> earrings, I like it. I like it a lot. You never know who the sponsors of this show uh, are gonna be. That's true. Let's see. So I guess we got some news to do. We do. And and I mean, look, we're going to there are so many ways to get in trouble with with talking about the news, especially the biggest news around the world right now. Right. I, I we're we're just going to play it straight. Yep. After an astounding reign of just over 70 years, Queen Elizabeth II now belongs to history. I wish I had the Marseillaise that I could play her off with. From a numismatic standpoint, this is always an exciting time as it means new money both coin and paper with a portrait of a new monarch facing the other direction. Right. And the litany of other traditions to follow. So it's amazing to me that she has appeared on more coins than any person in history. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I read that the the other day too. And I was just ruler that most of us have ever known. Right. I read that the other day and I just thought to myself, wow, you know, that's, that's really crazy to think about. Do you know who her first prime minister was? I do, but it's it's amazing to think that. Winston Churchill was her first prime minister, which is just amazing. So here's an interesting here's an interesting piece on that. Winston Churchill was born in eighteen seventy five. Wow. And the current new prime minister, her name is uh uh Maria Truss? Liz Truss. Liz Liz Truss. Uh she was born in nineteen seventy five. It's just amazing. Yeah. So it's there's a hundred years in between the two of those people. Right. Well, and her mom lived, I mean, her mom lived a long time as well. So they just lived, yeah, it just comes yeah. in their family. Long yeah, time. They, well, the Queen Mother, yeah, she lived a long time. Uh, the men, not quite so much. And, you know, look, a typical reign is 20, 25 years, right. which, you know, with Charles being King Charles now, uh, being, you know, 72 years old, he's definitely not going to have the reign that his mom had. For sure. I mean, unless he's a cyborg, it would be impossible. Yeah. (laughs) Now, I also want to say that with her seems to go the last vestige of the 20th century. You know, I think that the world is now unmistakably a different place than when I was born. Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see which is the first country to put out coins with uh, King Charles's head on it. Obviously, we... Should oh, be you know, they'll be out before the end of the year. But the whole thing is they have to get the portrait approved. Right, right. So should be interesting. Uh, it's definitely going to be weird. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously my entire life I've 
you know, she's been the only one that's on any of the Commonwealth coinage. So, huh, interesting. In other new UK news, you have until the end of this month. And that is, as we're recording, it's September 2022. Yep. To redeem any 20-pound and 50-pound notes as they are permanently being replaced with polymer notes. So turn them in now or you'll lose them forever. Now, that said, you know, with the death of the queen changes a lot of different things. I wonder if the Queen Elizabeth polymers will be scarce. Ooh. And they'll stop issuing them at some point before the end of this year. Look at you. Look at you over there thinking outside the box. Well, I mean, I think that this is going to create a line of demarcation as the change over to polymer notes can happen all at one time now. Right, right. right. And Because they're going to replace virtually every note in circulation with notes bearing the image of the new king. Yes. So this is a good opportunity to do it. They were doing it, you know, kind of denomination, two denominations at a time, and they were slowly changing it over. Now they don't have to be that way, and they can just kind of, boom, there it is. Yep. But, yes, I was thinking that, you know, the the new polymer notes with the queen on them. Yeah, yeah, the new just stuff like they're putting out. Of them. Yeah. Go out and get you some. Get you some. <laughs> that might be a new thing that starts on the show, by the way. <laughs> the last innovation dollar for 2022 has been released. This dollar features a design symbolic of the Ten Tennessee Valley Authority. Okay. So the TVA, as it was known, was a uh, it was a Depression era public works project created to quote oversee the construction of dams to control flooding. Mm -hmm. improve navigation, mm -hmm. and create cheap electric power in the Tennessee, Tennessee, man, I can't say Tennessee tonight, in the Tennessee Valley Basin. Okay. So the project uh, brought much of the mountainous rural areas of Tennessee into contact with the rest of the region. I mean, the TVA helped to create jobs, it fought poverty, and it created in infrastructure that was really, really something that helped uh, Tennesseans and, and people of, of that region. Yeah, and looking at the coin itself, I mean, it doesn't scream TVA. It, you know, a farm with some power lines going across it. You really have to. We had this conversation before. Well, you, you have really, to look at the legend. It's the yes. only way I knew it was a TVA coin. Yes. You have to really read the legend because without the legend, you would have no idea what this coin even is commemorating. So Yeah, no, you'd think it would, it, you would think that they invented farmland. Farms and power yeah. poles. <laughs> yeah, farms with with or or that they invented the telephone pole <laughs> that's true <laughs> but that farmer really hates that field with those power <laughs> poles going right in the middle of it he's fun. growing all these electricity poles probably, I'm telling you. probably fun to plow right nina otero warren quarter dollars have been released into circulation okay now i don't know about you but we're just now starting to find woba man killer quarters here in chicago i haven't even we been have a attention. federal reserve bank yeah so so the Mint may have released them, but they certainly do take a lot longer to reach the public over the last few years. Right. Well, and, and by the way, don't count on ordering them from the Mint either because the subscription orders are making the roll offerings from the Mint nearly sell out from the moment that they're offered. Yeah, I read about that as well. That's uh, interesting. I'm trying to find a picture of the coin in the story, but I surely don't see one. Sorry, guys. Uh, I think you are... Are you ahead of story? Yeah. Yep. Nope. No, you're yeah. not. Nope. nope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I tried. So, you know, I mean, that's kind of the thing. And I, I now look, I'm really glad that the series has interest, and maybe the lack of availability is helping more than hurting. You know, as far as that goes. Doubtful. Just you know, just saying. It, it the the quarters are. Uh, the quarters, I think, are used up, and, and everybody's done with them. They have been for a while. So, I will tell you that I have people come into my shop asking for these. Well, that it might be a freak thing, friend. Or, uh, look, I, I don't want to speculate. Um, I do know that we have a very large population, a very diverse population in Chicago. So, hard to say. That's but true. speaking of... The 2023 Women on Quarters designs have been unveiled. All right, let's take a look at these. Let's see if they so make let's sense. look at the things, and I want to, I want to see if you can tell me why these women are being honored. So who are they? I'll give you the name, and 
see if you can do it without cheating if you can tell me what they are famous for okay well i know some of them just by looking at the pictures but some of them i have no idea so go ahead Well, that's fine so you have bessie coleman well i mean from the quarter itself it looks like she was a a female pilot of some sort Um, she was the first african-american and the first native american woman pilot there you go so that one ina edith kanaka ole she's hawaiian for sure Absolutely. And I have no idea. I've never heard of her. She's so. an indigenous Hawaiian composer. Very, very good. There Custodian you. of native culture and traditions. There you go. See? You're never going to get this next one. <laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt. Eleanor Roosevelt. Yep. She, she's pretty She's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Um, yeah. At I'm first, when I, thought this, when I saw this next one, I thought it was Adina Menzel, but it's not. Hovita Idar. You know, when I first saw this one, I thought this was the mother of dragons from Game of Thrones, but I was also incorrect. Yeah, no, that's not her either. So, so Hovita Idar. <laughs> uh, was she a writer? I'm guessing from the design, she, she was a, a Mexican American journalist, activist, teacher, and suffragist. There so. you go. And Maria Tall Chief. So she is obviously a ballerina and obviously a Native American, American ballerina. First. Prima ballerina. There you go. So, see, these coins actually did their job much better than that TVA coin. I'm able yeah. to look at these coins and say, you know, uh, you know, aside I from think that the women on quarters program is more inspired. Well, sure, yeah. I, I, I think, I think that the point that they're trying to make comes across much better. So, yeah. So. I'd really love to see them continue the program after 2026. So they're going to stop for the semi-quincentennial in 2026. I'd like to see them continue the program after that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did I mention that the news was brought to us by Spicy Mike's? Nope. Because this is the kind of stuff that brings him to the party. (laughs) Dax Powers has sold the first and last silver and gold eagles of each type from 2021. I saw this this story Ugh. the numbers are in and i'm not sure who the winners and loser are but truthfully i'm sure i don't even know how i feel about it i know exactly who the winner and the losers are in this well, situation the US, stacks powers and ngc were the big winners correct I think that's pretty obvious correct but i think that everybody else loses on this Yes, we we talked about this, you know, on past episodes that they were going to do this. Now that it's done and it brought astronomical numbers, I mean, uh, you know, the fifty dollar coin brought one hundred thousand dollars for a gold eagle. You know, and as long as it stays in that slab, it, it's going to probably keep its value. Yeah, don't drop, don't slab. drop it, and it crack the slab. Is. However, is there any actual? See, I, I don't know the research on these. Is there any actual reality to the provenance of it being the first and the last? I, I, I mean, if this was a planned project that they were doing, I would say that, yes, there probably is some provenance to them actually knowing that that's the first one that they made. Uh, you know, because they probably planned to do this. They probably, um, you know, they probably had this laid out. That they were going to do these coins in order. Um, okay, so your tax money paid correct somebody to do this correct. okay that's even better correct uh but you know outside of that holder there is there's nothing there and there's no way to tell so yikes like the shadow w mint uh silver eagles right that's a huge premium for some plastic with a little bit of provenance yeah not something well, I, I mean the, the coin is what it is i understand people wanting the first one or the last one sure but the fact of the matter is is why is it even available in the first place well, uh, Mike, I I have a uh, hundred thousand reasons why it's available in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. Um, you know that that is why they did it. They did it because somebody out there was willing to pay one hundred thousand dollars for something like this. They didn't have a way to sell it for a hundred thousand dollars besides consigning it to an auction. So they did it. I, the I get that, but then they had to go about it, and then they had to select an auction house. Yep. You know, they had to Tax select dollars? partners in this, in this, whatever you want to call it. Tax dollars at work? Yeah. And, and, and people profited off of something that, that we paid for. And, mm-hmm. and I don't think that it served the collecting community. No, not at all. Well, I can't say not at all because there is the action, these coins actually do have a provenance. Yeah. But beyond that, it didn't serve anybody. You know, 
if you want to, if you want to, if you really wanted to do this the right way, you should have just randomly released these to people that ordered the Gold Eagles, and all of a sudden, you know, you get one in the mail that's the that's this, right? Yeah, or have a drawing like they do in Australia for the first coin struck in the new in the new year, right? 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 Do something like that. You can you can make it publicity. I mean, there's so many ways to do this right. That would have benefited the collectors. That that would have been for the benefit of the collectors. This was for the benefit of the mint. Period. Back to the UK for some new releases. The Royal Mint will release the last coin in the Winnie the Pooh and Friends collection. And while I'm generally not a fan of this stuff, oddly, and unlike the US commemorative coins, these continue to hold a premium even years after issue. Well, you know, it's interesting. I mean, uh, not my cup of tea. You like that that, that pun there? That was good, right? That was pretty good. Um, but, you know, it, it's there are people out there that like this. Uh, you know, Winnie the Pooh's iconic. It's been around since I was little and even before, I'm sure. So, uh, Are you kidding me? Winnie the Pooh is my wife's favorite. I, I absolutely have to have one of these to get her for Christmas. Yeah. But that's not the point. You it's know, Disney, it's, it's, man. It's, it's where, Disney. That's what it is. It's Disney. Well, yeah, and and it's just one of those things where it's like, would you pay a premium for a bunch of stuff from the 70s that had Mickey Mouse all over it? Yes, I would. Yeah, a lot of people would. Uh, Disney uh, well, people are not. What I'm saying is at least it seems to hold its premium and its value, sure. unlike U.S. commemorative coins, which you know serve a much better purpose and a much more coin-related purpose, and yet... Mm. Yeah, I agree. I yeah. concur, my friend. A gold five pound coin and a Piedfurt coin and a Piedfurt sovereign have been released to celebrate the platinum jubilee of Her Royal Highness the Queen right on time. I bet these are selling well now. So the Piedfurt sovereign is, of course, twice the thickness of a traditional sovereign, whereas the five pound gold coin is absolutely enormous. Wow, look it's, at that thing. It's the equivalent of five gold sovereigns. So it weighs nearly 40 grams. Wow. Yeah, so I would expect any offerings that were scheduled prior to her passing will be popular and will likely sell out very quickly. And almost um, from these images, it almost looks like they're made out of rose gold as well. They have a very reddish hue to them. Well, I mean, they're not, you know, sovereigns are not, oh. what are they, like 0. 0.24, 0. 0.18? Yeah, but they're they're uh, they're more than 22 carat. So. No, that's what I would, are they? Yeah, buddy. So they're definitely high content gold. Wow. Uh, so a lot of copper in it then. Yeah, that or you know that's what they did it for. Or a, it's a it's a saturation of the picture too. Could also could be. be. But you know if if they look like this when you get them, they're, they're very uh that's a very 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 red kind of rose goldish color. Yeah. From, from yeah, what that's, I'm that's seeing awfully red. That almost looks copper. Yes, very very much so. This is the story I thought you were on before. The American Liberty Silver Medal has been released and sold out. Ah, okay. So, yeah. So I, this coin they is released the these at the same show. design as last year's gold medal mm -hmm. with the bucking Mustang. Yep. They released these at the show. They were actually available on the floor, signed by the Mint director, um, having her there. Well, wasn't there that one, that one dealer that had a big stack of them on their table? It doesn't surprise me. Um, so, you know, I kind of like the idea of this program, but I have to question this coin. I sure. mean, the program concept is that these medals will use designs that rather than depicting an allegorical Lady Liberty, they're going to be something more reflective of the iconography, symbolic of American liberty. They got a really the, angry eagle on them. That's all I'm going to say. He's mad. Well, I mean, they're but they're departing from Lady Liberty to try and give you something that's a little bit more iconic and a little bit more symbolic. And, you know, so they're going with this bucking Mustang, right? Right, but, right. Okay, so here's here's the here's the grumpy old man part, right? The coin's taken up Silver Eagle Planchets. Right. Because I don't know why. They can't make enough Silver Eagle, so why they're using it for another coin? Because they know. have to, friend. They're required to. Legislation. It's amazing. It, no, these these weren't legislated to be done in silver this year. I thought that uh, was an option. I bet they were. Yeah, we'll have to look at the legislation. 
Okay, so I mean, because my question is, is, can't you make it a coin? I mean, you could. They 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 easily could have, but why not strike it in bronze? If you're gonna make it a metal, why not? But strike then it they in wouldn't bronze? sell any. They wouldn't. They wouldn't have that intrinsic. Uh, some of those metal value metals pretty well. Yeah, but so not like this a silver year's metal. design, as well as being done in silver, is also executed in regular relief, a feature that made these coins popular. I saw a couple. I mean, they're they're nice looking pieces, but they're just metal. Well, I love the Coin Week story, as it says, and I quote: "The metal is identical to last year's gold coin, apart from having a larger diameter, not being in high relief, and not having the inscriptions. The coin has a lower portion on both sides. That's identical. That's uh, not really identical. Sarcasm." U.S. Representative Alex Mooney is calling out Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and U.S. Mint Director Ventress Gibson for the, quote, long-running production slowdown in the Silver American Eagle Bullion Coin Program that has caused, quote, shortages and dramatically higher market prices prices for this iconic silver coin as compared to its peers worldwide. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a thing. It's true. They're trading at a massive premium right now. They are, but I'm not sure if this is productive in the way he's going after people. I think that there's a supply issue. Well, of course there's That policy issue. can be changed, right? You can, you know, they buy all the blanks for the silver eagles from one supplier. Yes. And that can be changed. And if they did that, then they'd have an easier time getting the supply. But that that's like, but Mike, but, that, that would require further legislation that takes probably four to six years to accomplish. Okay, but here, hold on a second. So you're telling me that that persecuting the the, the Treasury Secretary and the Mint Director is going to get it done? Well, of course not. But somebody's got to somebody's got to uh, you know it's got to land on somebody's shoulders, buddy. Here's kind of my point, though. It's like, isn't Alex Mooney in Congress? Yep. Don't they introduce legislation? Yep. Didn't you say the best solution was legislation? Yep. The defense rests. Hey, <laughs> I, I, I can't argue with that. Yeah, uh, that's just a thing. So to go after the Mint director and the Treasury secretary, this seems to be just more of a publicity stunt to me than an actual attempt to correct the issue. Yep, I agree and with that's you. That's just my two cents. I mean, it's, you know. Who am I? Some guy, you know. Yeah. Now, speaking of way more than two cents, a group of Massachusetts coins has sold for nearly $3 million. This and was... there is a very good reason for that. As these coins came from the Christopher J. Salmon collection, and if that name sounds familiar, does... you're probably a fan of Massachusetts coinage. Yeah. Because Salmon wrote Silver Coins of Massachusetts, Classification, mint, t- Minting Technique, Atlas, uh, which is accepted as probably the most definitive work on massachusetts coinage yeah yeah so this would be like harlan burke selling his ancient coin collection i would expect it to go for huge money right well yeah heck yeah and you know this is i guarantee you there's some super cool stuff in there uh you know including this coin uh in the image here which is a 1652 willow tree sixpence graded ngc au 55 that brought three hundred and twelve thousand dollars wow just you know, just an average piece, you know. Just a little something. It is a beautiful coin. Sixteen fifty two. That's that's just amazing. Yeah. Neat piece. Well, they weren't struck in sixteen fifty two, but that was the get around. Oh, it's that's what they're dated. That was the get around. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. So they're technically a restrike, right? No, they just they dated them sixteen fifty two because there was a I believe it there was a gap there that made them acceptable for them to, to somebody i don't remember get them from the crown yeah yeah something like that i forget off the top of my head it's been a long day <laughs> okay <laughs> if you have been a long time listener to our podcast it's kind of fun when you hear stories come back around sometimes so it's neat to me when we see those things happen and the australian donation dollar launched in 2020 and okay. it's still doing its job nice so six million coins were released in 2020 with the goal being that if you received a donation dollar and change, that you should donate it to charity. And this was to continue until 25 million of the coins were released. That's and really cool. 
you know, the launch noted that, quote, if every Australian donated a donation dollar just once a month, it had the potential to raise an additional 300 million Australian dollars annually. That's a pretty neat program. I think that, you know, maybe we it's should have something It's a really like interesting way of breaking it down and taking it to the people and letting, you know, small, small things do big things. Yep. It's cool. So new research, uh, according to the Coin Week article, has been released from the myth that has revealed that over half of Australia, 63% who have found a donation dollar coin proceeded to donate the coin, resulting in an estimated $1.9 million donated to charities and people or businesses in need. Good for them. That's a program that, that Amit has come out with that is actually doing something good, and people are not arguing about it, so I like it. Way to go, penal colony. Yeah. <laughs> A new edition of the 100 Greatest Series is now available. Yeah. Did you see this at the uh, ANA? At I the did World's Fair Mall? not get a chance to see much at the ANA. I was stuck to the table pretty much every okay, day. Because they had the author there. Yeah. So the 100 Greatest Canadian Coins and Tokens not only shows us the best of America's hat and her coinage, but highlights what is a relatively short Canadian history. Right. So having you know met the author at the World's Fair of Money, I'd love to have him on, but yep. he's kind of sketchy about it. So that's okay. Here we are. That's all right. Yeah, he's been on the show before, so you know he has checked that off of his list. <laughs> and uh, so yeah. And finally, in the news, just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, no, seriously, the eighth edition of Mega Red is now available at bookstores as well as Whitman.com and Hint Dennis. Uh, this <laughs> latest version features odd denomination coins from two and three cent pieces, half dimes, 20 cent pieces, one and three dollar gold, as well as Stellas. Nice. So I think that this telegraphs what will be coming next. It's got to be two and a half dollar gold, maybe two and a half and five together and then yep. 10 and 20 together. I would say that makes the most sense. So either way, the special sections in Mega Red are the equivalent of a Whitman coin encyclopedia. Yes, pretty much. And I told Dennis that I had them all going across the shelf. And if you look at my background, you'll see that. Yeah. Yep, and yep, he yep. recommended yep. that I reinforce the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Found advice. That's funny. Yeah. they. I mean, that's, he said, I'd really reinforce that if I was you. <laughs> So that was the news, and the news was brought to us tonight by Spicy Mike's Hot Sauce. Spicy Mike, still bringing you just the perfect blend of rational thought, slowly marinated in sarcasm for a flavor you won't find anywhere else. Get yourself some Spicy Mike's Hot Sauce available exclusively on the Coin Show podcast. That's Spicy Mike's Hot Sauce. Get you some. And by earrings, sometimes they dangle, sometimes they mangle. Especially if you let them tangle. Being beautiful isn't for everyone, but for some, there's earrings. I love that. Oh, that was good. You're listening to the Coin Show Podcast with Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman. <sighs> that, that, was that was a great new segment, buddy. Thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. I, I, I really like just, you know, talking about what's going on. I have been a little bottled up because we did what one show last month. Yeah. And, you know, so you it, keep it making... was time to get it out. And, uh, but you know, we've been really busy this last month. Yeah. Yeah. We've been yeah. making a lot of stuff happen. You keep making including... bottle jokes. You're going to have to hold that bottle up again. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All the time. Spicy bikes, hot sauce. It's like, so we look, I, 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 I made it a, a sponsor at the end of last year, the end of last season. And, uh, Matt was like, we got to make that happen. And I'm like, <laughs> are you kidding me? And he's like, no, 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 we got to make that happen. And I'm like, okay, so I actually know this company. It's a local company here in Chicago. And it's not a Chicago company. It's a small business. It's a really local uh, company. And they make craft hot sauce. Would and they be considered like like, like hot sauciers? Like I believe so. Oh, nice. I mean, it, look, they have a site. It's gindos.com, G-I-N-D-O-S.com. If you want to go check it out, they've got all kinds of different hot sauce. You can order it. Um, but, I mean, the fact of the matter was is that we went to them and I said, hey, look, there's a sauce that you guys make, but you only make it 
in small batches and on special occasions. It's not available all the time. And I'm like, I'd like to get that sauce. And they said, yeah, we can do that. Like, really? Nice. Oh, yeah, we can do that. And I'm like, okay, now it's got to happen. Now it's absolutely got to happen. So we did. And we we put some in bottles. And uh, for our patrons, uh, I believe that that they have shared enough in this that we need to share a little with them. Yep. And, and if you guys would like some hot sauce, the patrons, you know how to get a hold of us. Just uh Oh, no, no. I, every I, every patron, we're going to send you guys a message. You guys, uh, if you would like to give us our address, we'll ship you a bottle of Spicy Mike's Hot Sauce or two. And yeah. uh, if you're not a patron, you want one, uh, shoot Mike an email, mike at coinshowradio.com. We'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. Yeah, why not? So anyways, yeah. So while it lasts, we've got Spicy Mike's Hot Sauce. And it, guys, and we, we cracked a bottle of it the other day when it came in. With It came in right at the perfect time, right around lunch. It's good. It's really good stuff. It's not just a gimmicky bottle. The sauce is great. So no, the sauce is really good. I, what I want to do is I'm going to take you know one of my empty bottles when I'm done, and uh, you know I'll I'll wash it out and I'll put it up on the shelf to keep it. I am that it is definitely not something that you're going to keep sealed. I you love should not. you should eat this sauce. I love it when a good joke from our show gets turned into something real. <laughs> that's exactly yes. what happened. So yes, no, absolutely, that's what happened. Oh, buddy! Well, and tonight you, we have earrings. You know, it's stepping up and and uh, and doubling up. So yeah, that's funny. Well, you know what? After that marathon news segment, Mike, I think we need to just jump straight right into the coolest thing because I think you're going to be able to talk. You just about... want to get your beating over with. Well, that's I true. Want to hang it over your head a little that's bit. That's true. But I think that you are going to be able to talk about this coolest thing for a while of yours. So let's... oh, I I think there's definitely there's there's a lot there so yeah if you want to let's just do it. Move on. let's 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 go to the coolest thing and then we'll we'll start with yours and sure that way we can we can we can marinate in mine for a little while <laughs> you're just you and the sauce jokes man they're killing me and now for the coolest thing to walk in this week a competition segment between matt and mike to see who's had the coolest thing walk into their shops who'll win this episode let's find out matt Mike, who's got the coolest thing? It's not often that I concede before it even happens. I'm usually rip-roaring and ready to go and kicking your butt. But you know what? I'm going to give her a shot anyways. We bought a cool coin a rip, in the tater chip. We bought a cool coin in the office while we were in Chicago, actually. I didn't even buy it. It, it was waiting for me when I got back. Uh, we bought an 1839.0 half dollar uh, raw across the counter. Uh, it was sitting on my desk when I got back. We sent it off to the grading company, and it actually just came back yesterday, uh, and it's certified as an AU55. Uh, so 39.0 is really cool because, A, it's the only cat bust half struck in New Orleans. Uh, B, it's the only cat bust half with a mint mark. And C, the mint mark is on the obverse right above the date, which I think is really cool. Uh, that is why I chose this coin as our, my coolest thing. It's my sacrificial lamb. I still like it. There Just you go. Throw yourself on the train tracks. Um, uh, you know what I like about this coin is is the fact that the thirty nine zero is the first branch mint half. Yes, and it's probably the first branch mint coin. Yep. Is uh, it not? Or is it, there a thirty six zero? No. No. I know. Yeah. So you're thirty. So thirty six, thirty nine is when your branch mints open. Thirty eight is when your branch mints open. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think so, they uh, might have made yeah. gold. But but early stuff with the mint mark on the front is just so cool. It's so different. It's like looking at uh, Walking Liberty halves with the mint mark on the front. Right, right, right. You yeah. know, it's just different enough to where it's kind of wow, it's neat. Yeah, yeah. I just liked it. I thought it was super neat being the only cat bust half with a mint mark. Um, Did you have the gray pegged when you when you sent it? Yeah, I nailed it right on. Right on. It's it's a pretty easy coin to grade. Um, the coin's got a little bit of luster hiding behind some uh, nice, crusty original toning. Uh, you know, the coin is just a textbook AU55. It was very, very easy to grade. Yeah. So I find that there are certain grades that are really easy to grade. Yes. 55 is one of them. Yep. Yeah. That's right. That is exactly right. Beautiful coin. Uh, I just, I think I just put it on our website today or yesterday. So that's why I had these pictures handy. All right. All right. Go ahead. 
Okay, so I have to tell you a little story. Okay, let me, let me bring it back to us here so you can tell your story and people can see your face. Okay, go. Tell you a little story. Uh, we had a lady that came in who uh, who had inherited these coins from her father who inherited the coins from his father. And um, th there was a really big mix of stuff. There was foreign stuff. There was U.S. stuff. And it took us quite a while to go through it because almost everything was still in envelopes. Like the little cellophane crunchy ones or? No, like the old paper ones. Okay. And many of these coins came out of envelopes that had B-Max Mel on them. Ooh, cool. So, you know, I mean, we were just kind of going through it really leisurely and, and enjoying it. And all of a sudden, um, my... <laughs> My CFO, who's sitting across, it's me, Ross, and Bob. And Bob's the CFO, and he's sitting across the table, and he looks at me, and he goes, there's a 95 Morgan in here. I'm like, what? Oh. And he goes, there's a 95 proof Morgan in here. Hold on a second. Let's see this. So and how was it stored? Me. Just curious. Pardon me? How was it being stored at that point? It was in an envelope. Like a like a, like one of the like craft paper blue, envelopes. Oh, blue. craft paper envelope for 70 years nice and was completely toned you could see underneath the toning there was frost okay so i mean there was like a cameo frost to it but it was it was covered in tone okay and awesome. uh so we're like okay that's cool and you know we start looking through the deal and we start looking and you know find over here loose we find an 1895 uh indian head proof cool or actually no it was an 1893 indian head proof that i found first okay and an 1895 nickel proof okay and i'm like okay there, there's there's got to be more here and we started looking started looking and in a bag of 1964 washington quarters we found the rest of an 1895 proof set and the minor coins from an 1893 proof set. Wow. So the 1895 proof set uh, was still not damaged. As you can see, the coins are absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, none of them cameoed. So, I mean, there there is plenty of frost on them. There's plenty of, of uh, contrast. But when it came down to it, it was one side or the other that, that wasn't very good. That's and, usually the case. Yeah, and if you look in the upper left corner of this particular um, photo, you will see the king of that set, the granddaddy. That's the 95 Morgan. And you had your, your uh, grade nailed. I had this grade nailed. Yeah. What it, what it, so I, I mean, obviously I know the story, but uh, I'm, a, you know, the, you guys had to send these in to get them graded. Oh, absolutely. For so sure. first thing we did was because this was right at the A&A. We bought it right before the A&A. That, that's good so timing. We, we walked it through the A&A figuring that, okay, we're going to send it through the express service. And that way, if PCGS sees some kind of a problem with it, we can always still send it over to NGC and get it through the show. Right. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Well, PCGS called us. Uh oh. And uh, and asked us about the coins and stuff like that, and kind of gave us a little preview. And uh, we knew the grades before they published them. And very very cool. As a matter of fact, I had walked up to Steve Feltner, who was at the Ask an Expert table at PCGS at the World's Fair of Money. Okay. And I said. Uh, yeah, we submitted uh, an 1895 proof set. And he goes, that was yours? Ah. And, uh, and another coin that we got called about, and that one's kind of sitting waiting for you, too. Um, and uh, he, he was like, the grading room called me on this set. <laughs> That's always, That's so always good. We got him back. Every single coin graded. Uh, most of the grades are between 64 and 66. The dollar, which is the, that's the meat and potatoes of the set, is 66 plus. Ooh, that's tough. So it is the seventh finest known. 
And this is a coin that was not even known to the numismatic community a month and a half ago. Isn't that crazy how that stuff happens? It just pops up out of nowhere out of a cigar box or a box of coins, and there she is. So we then took the graded set okay. and, of course, sent it to John Albanese at CAC. Very smart idea. Where John called us <laughs> and talked to us about them. And every single coin got the CAC sticker. Wow. That doesn't happen very often. It really doesn't. So we sold this as a set. And it never even made it to the website. So um, wow. there were some people that were that were a little curious about, well, well, why didn't you put it up? It's like, I understand, and it's a business model thing. Well, LJ Burke is interested in placing high end coins in very high end collections, right? And for specific collectors, because when those collectors die, those coins come back to Burke and we get to sell them again. Yeah. So there is an advantage in selling it to specific clients rather than just the general public, even if it sells for a few bucks less. Yep. But better to get it back in the future than send it into the wind and never see it again. So right. sell it more than once. It's way more fun that way. Yeah. You so, I mean, to, friends. to have discovered this and found coins that, that just didn't exist that are of this caliber, I mean, because, uh, you know, this is, I mean, we sold the set for six figures. Oh, of course you did. Yeah. I mean, I, probably the, the probably the dollar's worth that much. Mm, yeah, it is, yeah. actually. So, yeah. But the rest of the proof set, obviously, is really not worth anywhere near as much as that no, dollar is. not at all but you know i think it's really neat because it's a very nicely matched set as far as all the coins are concerned and i think that's what helped it at the grading company obviously you know all the coins look like they've had the kind of the same treatment over the years which obviously they have um yeah you know. except for that short stint in the uh the junk silver bag <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, and, and this is the thing is, is, you know, Steve Feltner was telling me that when they were looking at these, you know, at that express grade, they were like, look, we don't want somebody, we don't want to be really hard on these coins and then have somebody bust them out and dip them and then resubmit them. Well, and that happens we more. We want to make sure that we get the grade right. Yeah. That happens more than you would like to know about, I think. Yes. So it was it was a mission of mercy that they really, really wanted to see the set stay original and exactly the way it is. And with the CAC stickers on them, they are going to remain exactly the way they are. I'll pretty much guarantee you that. Lord, I'd hope so. The next 20 or 25 years. Cool. That is. That's not the coolest thing that walked into my shop. That might be the coolest thing that I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I was just getting ready to say, Mike, this might be the coolest thing that you've ever pulled uh, you know, up to the show like this. So. That's why I wanted to give a little extra time to this. It's just a beautiful set. I, I'm super jealous. And you said there was a 93 set as well, or at least parts there of one? There was a 93 set. No, there was a 93 set as well, and it was in the junk silver bag just with the rest of them. Man, two dates, uh, two dates for the dollars that you want to get, 93 and 95, and they're both there in the in the set. That's pretty cool. So the, the, the $93 is not as nice. It originally was nicer, but... The toning wasn't anywhere near as kind to it. Yeah, that happens, unfortunately. And look, if it's going to work out that way, I'd much sooner be on the 93 than the 5. Oh, of course. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it is what it is, but yeah, definitely, for sure. And now I've handled um, the finest 92-proof set. Yeah, I remember that. And one of the finest 95-proof sets, if not the finest, yeah, I... as a set. Yeah, I think that's probably has a good good chance to be. Yeah. Wow. Super, super duper cool. I'm just glad you were able to bring that to the show. That was fun to look at. Like I said, I knew I, I was getting smoked job. this episode, so I just I just wanted to be quick, get mine out of the way, and let's talk about that bad boy. So, awesome. Thank you so much for bringing that. Thank you, Burke, uh, Harlan J. Burke, for letting us uh, showcase that beautiful set on the show. Yeah. You guys rock, too. So, Is Aaron still here? Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Maybe. Just want to... <laughs> <laughs> well, friend, you know, it's been a heck of a show. Episode 210. 
I, I don't think I don't want to close it out any other way besides just looking at that eighteen ninety five proof set. I'm almost tempted to just to just bring it back up like this and just have it sit there for the rest of the show, but I'm not going to. It's just it's gorgeous. Mm. No, it, it was definitely something interesting and it and it's a it's that's the story of a lifetime. Yep. I think that the deal itself is gonna be somewhat legendary. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, because we found an eighteen ninety five proof set. Most of it was in a junk silver bag. It's like that's what blows my mind. That's all CACs, and it's that like, makes me makes me cringe. It gives me a little twinge up my spine every time you, you should have seen us trying to dig it out of it. Oh, I can imagine it was like it was in there. It's like we're in there. We're trying not to move the coins too much. And, you know, <laughs> get a bunch of scuff marks. Uh, on it's it. like you guys are playing Operation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah. it knows. <laughs> oh, geez. So, um, yeah, it's a brand new season. This fall, we have got some, we've got some surprises for you. Correct. More than just the spicy Mike's hot sauce. Yep, 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 yep. We have. Uh, I, I'll, I'll put it to you this way: we have. You can tell them. I don't care. No, 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 no. This oh, is gonna wait because yeah. this is this is big. Um, but we have we have a guest lined up, and the only thing I can say is big. Yeah. I think that's I think that's that's enough. We we have got a big guest lined up and it's gonna be two shows broken into two shows, yeah. one for the patrons. Yep. And uh you know. Stay tuned, you'll learn more. We'll release more on social before it happens. Course. We want you guys to interact as well. So Yes. And when we have a guest like this, we want your questions as well. So yep. you'll know well in advance who it's gonna be and uh and what we're going to be talking about. For sure. All right, buddy. Well, let's wrap this sucker up. These these fine people that are hanging out with us tonight have probably all just now woken up and cleaned the drool off their face after looking at that beautiful 1895 proof set. Uh, so let's let them go to bed. Oh, go on. You embarrass me. No. <laughs> so we would like to thank uh, the fine people at Harlan J. Burke for letting us showcase their set. Uh, we would like to thank our production staff for all the hard work that they do, all the work on Facebook, all the work on all of our social media pages. And uh, most of all, we'd like to thank you for listening. You know, this is a labor of love for us. Uh, it's like there are times when when it seems to, you know, kind of grind a little bit and, and, you know, we're there. But it's like I can't be more excited to be here. I really can't. So I'm looking forward to this year. It's going to be a really cool season. Yeah, for sure, buddy. For sure. All right. Well, other 210 episodes coming your way. Right. Well, then I guess at, leaving it at that, I guess we'll just say that uh, I'm Matt. I'm Mike. And we will talk to you guys next time on the Coin Show Podcast. You've been listening to the Coin Show Podcast with Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman. Tune in next time when the boys bring you another exciting episode you can find them wherever you get your podcasts on apple Podcasts, spotify iHeartRadio, on our website at www.coinshowradio.com you can also join our private facebook group where everyone sees every post just search facebook for friends of the coin show and ask to join if you'd like more you can become a subscriber on Facebook or join our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash The Coin Show. If you sign up at the $5 month level or higher, you'll have access to exclusive content on patreon.com on the off weeks, including the Not The Coin Show podcast. Thanks for listening to the longest running coin podcast in the world of numismatics. This, this has been, been the, the one and only, the original. original. This, this has been, been the, the Coin, Coin Show, Show Podcast. Podcast.